as a wrap up to example 8.1 there's two scenarios i just quickly want to look at this is now on page 314 in your chapter 8 introduction to consolidations and the first scenario is what if p limited did not own any preference shares in s limited if that is the case, you will go through exactly the same processes to determine how much of the equity is attributable to the ordinary and preference shares. And then that portion attributable to the preference shares will be fully attributed to NCI. There's no investment by the parent. So in journal 2, the ad acquisition journal entry for the preference shares, the total preference share capital will eliminate to NCI. The full balance will be moved to the NCI ad acquisition fair value amount and as a result you'll have a different goodwill or gain from bargain purchase. There's no investment by P that eliminates in that journal. Then journal 5, the dividend, preference dividend elimination journal entry, it still needs to happen. It is a negative movement in the equity of S that we attribute to NCI with that debit leg of the journal. The only difference now is the full 10,000 will eliminate as a debit to non-controlling interests. Remember, the parent is not a preference shareholder in this scenario. They would not have recognized dividend income from the preference dividend declared. So the journal entry will be a debit to NCI, credit to dividend declared for the full 10,000 Rand. Then in journal 8, <clears throat> where we attribute the profit of the subsidiary to NCI preference shares, the full 10,000 Rand representing the portion of the profit of S that is attributable to the preference shareholders will be fully attributed to your NCI preference shares. Then another alternative scenario, if in example 8.1, we assume that the ordinary and preference dividend that was declared and paid during 2010 actually represents the 29 financial years dividend, while the ordinary and preference dividend for 2010 have not yet been declared. So what is your scenario there? Then it means that in 29, there was no preference dividend declared. So it's actually in arrears for 29. And in 2010, you ended up declaring the prior year's preference dividend. Please assume then that there was still no dividend in arrears at acquisition date. I'm quickly going to do a timeline to show you the effect of this scenario. So to illustrate the difference between this alternative scenario and what we did in example 8.1, we'll do the timeline again. I have my retained earnings ad acquisition of 7,500. The TB opening balance is still 117,500. And I have the movement identified of 110,000 Rand. First question you ask when you are busy with your chapter 8 with your preference share implications is... That 110,000 Rand, who is that now attributable to? Is that still only fully attributable to the ordinary shareholders or is there perhaps a portion of that that is now attributable to your preference shareholders? If you remember correctly, I did a little breakdown of this TB balance to help you with that decision. I'll do the same now. The opening balance is 7,500. There was no dividends declared in X9 by S. So I would have had a profit. Please note, I'm just changing the scenario to make it easier to identify the differences. So by looking at that breakdown in yellow, you can see the preference dividend of 10,000 Rand is not yet excluded because it was not declared. It was not yet recognized by S. But because I'm working with a cumulative preference shareholder in this example, they are still entitled. There's still a portion attributable to them regardless of whether the dividend was declared or not. So as a result, what you'll have to do in this instance then is to exclude that 10,000 rand representing the portion that the preference shareholders are entitled to. That then leaves me 
with a hundred thousand rand of the movement that is attributable to the parent and NCI in the 70%, 30% ratio as ordinary shareholders and immediately you'll need a consolidation journal entry for the 30,000 rand attributable to NCI since to opening balance. But you are not done now. You have only attributed 100,000 rand at this point in time. So you will also have to, in the sense to opening balance period, attribute the 10,000 rand to the parent and NCI in the 40%, 60% preference share holding ratio. So now there will be a consolidation journal entry for that 6,000 rand to attribute that since to opening balance retained earnings to the preference share NCI. And why will I now have to write this consolidation journal entry? Remember, we write consolidation journal entries for NCI when their balance has to change. And in X9, we've only attributed to them 6,000 Rand. The dividend was not declared. So the second journal entry to debit NCI, credit dividend declared by S, did not happen in X9. And as a result, you will have to write this consolidation journal entry to change your NCI opening balance for the 6,000 Rand and the 30,000 Rand. Please note the effect of this compared to example 8.1. Let's also look at the effect on the current year in this scenario. So you'll start with the profit of 130,000 Rand from the TB of S. That's always your starting point. And now you have to ask who is that attributable to? Now in X10, you did declare uh, the the preference dividend of X9. So there was an actual dividend declared. But when do you deduct the 10,000 from the profit? What is your scenario? What is your criteria that you need to evaluate it against before you eliminate this 10,000 as attributable to the preference shareholders? Is it dependent on whether the dividend was declared or not? Or is it dependent on whether it's cumulative or non-cumulative? It's actually both. This is cumulative preference shareholders, regardless of whether a dividend was declared or not, regardless of which year's dividends in arrears are being declared or not, you have to exclude this 10,000 to get to the 120,000 attributable to the parent and NCI in the 70%, 30% ratio. So there's profit attributable to NCI of 36,000 Rand. Remember, this happens. This 10,000 I'm taking out here happens because it's cumulative. It happens every year. Every year, the preference shareholders are entitled to that 10,000 dividend, which gets attributed to them, which increase their balance. Every year. Only when there's an actual dividend declared do you have the second journal entry where you deal with the actual dividend declared. But remember the moment you've taken out this 10,000 Rand or this fixed annual preference dividend from the profit for the year, you have now only attributed the 120,000 Rand and you have to attribute the full profit of 130. So you will need a second calculation taking the 10,000 of the current year and attributing that to parent NCI at 40%, 60%. So you'll have that second profit attributable to NCI journal as well. It's important that you understand the portion attributable to the preference shareholders when they're cumulative happens every year regardless of which year's dividend gets declared in that particular reporting period. Now, because there was an actual preference dividend declared, you'll have that journal entry to eliminate that intra-group dividend. 
Please have a look at the analysis of equity and identify how this changed scenario affects the analysis. We already discussed it on the timeline, but just to bring it all together. Because the preference dividend cumulative was in arrears in the period since to opening balance, there is this portion of the movement in the retained earnings of S that is now attributable to the preference shareholders. So you started with your movement, TB minus AT, but you had to exclude this portion of that movement attributable to the preference shares. What you left with is what's attributable to the ordinary shares, and that now gets attributed, and now you have that consolidation journal entry for NCI in sense to opening balance retained earnings. The rest of the analysis is the same. You exclude this 10,000 from the profit because it's cumulative preference shareholders. They are entitled to that 10,000 rand. <clears throat> but now, now I just want to touch on something else. This period, you have to understand, since to opening balance, that period can be many years. It can be four years, six years, 10 years, 15 years, doesn't matter. Your principle remains the same. You start with movement since TB minus at, and that TB balance will now be four years down the line or 10 years or eight years, whatever the case might be. You always start with actual movement in the retained earnings of S. Then, if it's cumulative preference shares, and in that since to opening balance period, there were any periods where the preference dividend was in arrears. You have to exclude all those periods, preference share, dividend, to get to the portion attributable to the ordinary shares. So let's assume this is an eight-year period and that the preference dividend cumulative was in arrears for all eight years. Then this portion that you exclude will be the 10,000 rand per year multiply, multiplied by eight years. What's left is attributable to the ordinary shareholders. What if in the eight years the preference dividend was only in arrears for three years. Then you multiply the 10,000 with three, that gets excluded from the movement, and what's left is attributable to the ordinary shares. It is all based on that principle of what they are entitled to. Back to the... Alternative scenario on 8.1, the preference share analysis, just have a look where it will change. In the since to opening balance period, there will now be a portion of the retained earnings of S that has to be attributed to the owners of the parent and my NCI preference shares. That 10,000 was moved from the ordinary share analysis into the preference share analysis and as a result there will be a consolidation journal entry for NCI in the sense to opening balance period. For the rest of this analysis all the same, the 10,000 that's attributed is the annual preference dividend because it's cumulative and there's only a preference dividend in the analysis when there was an actual preference dividend declared.